culture of birch around the globe. Any place where the white bark birches occurs, um, there's been a culture that has utilized that birch. In some cases, very similarly. In other cases, very, quite different. This piece here, you know, it's a, what we call kind of a berry basket. Yeah. But the uh, <coughs> sort of the novel twist is the way he deals with these ends here. When birch bark artist John Zasada talks about his collection, you think he's such an expert that he must have worked with birch box all his life. They come from Siberia, but I don't know if they were made in Siberia. The way these baskets are made is that the this the base here is woven up the whole way. John, a PhD in forestry and former U.S. Forest Service employee, would not have thought to become a birch bark weaving instructor. He now teaches in a local college. I'd never done any art, craft sort of stuff until about the time I was getting ready to retire. Uh, I took a class and I met who's both Fred's and my mentor, Charlie Mayo, and kind of got turned on to this. Watch your step. 40 years of experience from the Forest Service is handy when it comes to selecting the best materials for basket making. I guess the advantage that I had coming into this that most other people don't have is I knew a lot about the birch tree. I'd never done anything with the bark other than light fires and that sort of thing. But so I, you know, I had a, I had a real sense and I'd collected a lot of birch bark things over the years. So that's the way I got started and then I, it just, became a bigger part of my life after I retired from the Forest Service. And um, some people say I'm obsessed, but I have kind of backed off from that a little bit. To John, the ample forest that surrounds his house in Grand Rapids, Minnesota is a treasure trove. Got her. <clears throat> to get the bark off the tree, you just need to make a vertical cut mm -hmm. through the um, through the outer bark. What you see here is the inner bark. The outer bark is just this. Now this is summer bark here. Mm -hmm. okay. This is winter bark, but you need to moisten it, I guess, and put it in the light for a while, and then this will probably turn deep brown. So what's left here is the same as here, and it's the the outer, the inner, it's the outermost surface of the inner bark. That outer, outer surface of the inner bark is drying up and it will gradually flake off and you'll get this kind of pattern. And so this is, this black that's on here is, ex is this exactly the same layer that you see here. And <clears throat> underneath this then, there's a, a new layer of bark being formed. And so <clears throat> over some period of time, probably at least 10 years, you can har actually harvest the bark again. And that's what I did with this piece here. And then on the inside, you get a really neat pattern to it almost looks like alligator skin you can roll this up like this and we'll go back now after a walk in the woods john has enough bark to prepare the strips needed for basket making maybe the first thing would be to do would be to show you how i cut bark into strips so the first thing i usually do is do kind of a preliminary removal of part of the outer layer of the bark. Splitting is a crucial part of the basket making process. In terms of making baskets, you know, you've got to know how to weave, but the quality of the basket depends solely on how good you are at splitting the bark into just the right thickness. And actually see here's a little rough that would probably run out so if I take my time I 
can get right through that. So there you end up with two really nice strips. John never hesitates to share tips on birch bark weaving. It's just you know, a simple process of laying out. Um, just uh, some people try to lay them all out in one direction and then weave through, and it's just almost impossible to do. So the best way to do it is just to alternate like this. This mat right here, I won't add any more to it, that would be described as a 3x3 three three mat. <clears throat> what you see here is going to be the inside of the basket and the outside of the basket. Because you weave it up and then you turn it and weave it down on itself. <laughs> Birch bark is strong and extremely water resistant. It was widely used in traditional basket making by the Native Americans. It is also popular wherever the tree grows, such as Scandinavia and Russia. When you get, you know, to the to the woven baskets, um, that our best, the best examples, and probably the f the more most, you know, detailed work that was done was in Scandinavia and Russia. And, you know, the, the thing that attracts me to it is the simplicity of the whole thing. I mean, all you need is a pair of scissors or some sort of a sharp instrument to get the material and to make these baskets, you know, and you can just make, people can make absolutely elegant things with just this simple, simple thing and they'll last forever. Mm -hmm.